Good morning! We are looking at dyslexia, moderate to mild reading disabilities, and the second part of our eye movement research to try to understand this reading process. Now, your eyeball acts as a scanner as you read. Now, notice, when you put something over the scanner at the grocery store, it needs to move over that scanner so that it can see those different markings in the same way for the light the waves of light to stimulate the whatever they're called to paint this picture on our brain, the eyeball needs to move over the print and reality. Here's an experiment. Try to stare at that without moving your eyeball at all. It becomes very hard or stare at something at the wall. Eventually that starts to fade a little bit. Our brain needs our eyeballs to go over that. Experiment number two, look at that picture. Now notice your eyeballs. They do not focus on any one part. They're kind of dancing around to create the picture. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. Here is a tracker device looking at how people look at a picture. Notice how they kind of look at the eyeballs first. Do, 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 and go all over that eye movement. How our brain creates reality. By the way, we never experience reality directly. We only experience the reality that's painted on our brain, that our senses create, that on the canvas of our minds. Again, looking at here the saccades, the eye movement, doop, 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 doop. When we look at people in pictures, we tend to focus on the eyes first. Now, I'll read a sentence on this page. Notice how your eyeballs make slight movements, up and down, back and forth. Eye movement helps to create the pattern, that imprint on the brain. Again, the brain is not a mini camera that replicates a small picture of reality. Rather, the brain is an artist that creates pictures based on the sense patterns it receives as your eyeball is scanning that. The eye has three visual readings, foveal, parafoveal, and peripheral. And foveal is that little region there takes up one to two percent of your total vision, you see only three to six percent of the letters in clear focus at any one time. I read this morning that foveal is about the size of a grape held at arm's length. That is the amount of uh, visual information that you can see clearly. The brain tricks you into thinking you're seeing all of reality clearly because you're eyes are dancing around and creating the picture. The parafoveal is 24 to 30 letters that you see, but not very clearly. This would be the parafoveal region. You can make out the letters, but not very clearly. And then the peripheral is everything else whoop, that, that you can detect, but that is clearly out of focus. So, with the very small in focus viewing area, how is anybody able to read more than 10 words per minute? Answer, efficient readers are able to read quickly because of the top-down flow of information as depicted in the transactive model. When we read, we use mostly the first and the last letter. Our eyes dot around using a minimum of visual information. And what does that tell us again about the importance of sounding out each and every individual letter? That would actually slow us down. And again, here is the foveal, parafoveal, and peripheral. We're only able to see a little bit. But this top-down model, remember that there's 10 times more information flowing from the top down than the bottom up. That means as we're reading, 10 times more information is going out. We're making predictions based on what we know about what is to become. And then as our eyeballs scan about, we either confirm or we correct that prediction. So we're always a little ahead of where our eyeballs are in creating meaning. Again, this transactive model is very important. The old model says information goes from the thalamus straight up to the cortex. But recent brain imaging says there's 10 times more information coming from the cortex down to the thalamus and out through the sentences. Essentially, the brain is a memory machine. We use the patterns and the information to make predictions of reality and to make sense of reality. 
We use the information on the head, both semantics and syntax, to make predictions about what we're reading. That is much more efficient than thinking that we use individual letters to create words, to create ideas, and that goes up. The predictions we make enable us to make sense of the semi-blurred letters in the view regions. So efficient readers use semantics in syntax, use very minimal letter cues. The brain tricks us into thinking that we're looking at every individual letter when we do not. The brain tricks us into thinking we have looked at every individual word when we read <clears throat> 60% of the words at best. Again, here's that, that idea that <clears throat> 10 times more information is flowing from the cerebral cortex down to the thalamus. All right, this is the end. Hopefully you've understand a little bit about how the brain creates meaning with print, and we'll talk about some of the uh, ramifications for students with dyslexia in a minute.